Okay, so this is what we've been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. This is zirconium. And by mining this, we're going to be able to move up in the world, advance, build the end game stuff. And it's a beautiful thing. Welcome back, everybody, to Osiris New Dawn. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we're going to space. But before we do that, um, I'm flying around a little bit in the ship and uh, just doing some more salvaging because there's a lot of salvage still around. And now that we have the ship, we can get around so much easier, even though, you know, I, I complained a little bit yesterday about the ship taking a long time to land. And I stand by that complaint because it really sucks. It needs to be fixed. Even with that, this still is really ultimately the best vessel to use. Uh, to to gather stuff because you know you can fly around and so super easy mobility lots of storage space it is the only way to fly so um yeah i'm just flying around guys for a little bit and looking for uh for salvage um just to kind of replenish you know some more supplies and then when we get back to the base there's one thing i want to show you about uh about the workbench that you guys mentioned in the comments and then uh, we're going to head up into space. We'll talk a little bit about how to prepare for that, too, when we get back to the base. Whoa. Yeah, I don't know. This this whole frame rate thing flying around in the ship is just weird. Uh, it, when I was doing it yesterday, it seemed like as soon as I landed, then it was fine again. And I don't remember this happening in the earlier stable release. Uh, I didn't have the same problem. Okay, now it just fixed itself. I wonder if it had something to do with the blood leaf forest. Maybe. I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to fly around, uh, just look for some more salvage, get more parts, that sort of thing. And uh, then we're going to go up into space and get ourselves some azurium. And we're going to also be looking for um, zirconia. Yeah, zirconia is what we need actually the most, even more than the azurium. Because apparently, it's now just the hover bike that needs azurium, according to... You know, the recipes from yesterday. So, um, yeah, and, you know, now that we have maxed out salvage skills and salvage amount and we have the the spanner tool, salvaging is just like a hot knife through butter. It's just really, really fast uh, and a great way to get resources. And I know I've got more stuff around here to salvage. I just... Okay, here we go. Is this... Uh, no, this is... Um, oh, there's a there's a satellite dish. This is Alpha Refinery. This is one of the um, the fixed POIs, I guess you would call it. So you can't salvage anything here because of story mode stuff. Uh, it's like we're going to try and land right on top of the habitat there. Is it going to let me do it, though? Probably not. <laughs> no. Okay, let's just move forward this way a little bit. Yeah, see, you know, I hate to keep beating a dead horse here, but... If they just made this landing, <clears throat> you know, faster, then the ship would be amazing. There we go. It'd be absolutely amazing. It's just too, too darn long. Okay, well, let's hit this satellite here. Um, yeah, see how fast this is? It's just, it's a beautiful thing. That's what it is. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> okay, we got to find the right spot there. Um, come on. Where are you? We just had you right there. No, there. Yeah, that's the other thing that I w want them to fix, too. Is why do we have to be on a very specific spot? Just let us salvage the damn thing, right? Right on the corner there. Okay. So, um, I did we check this mine? I'm sure we did. Yeah, see, this mine's disabled. This used to be called Gamma Mine uh, in, the, in the last uh, stable version. But it is currently disabled for now. I'm assuming the devs will, you know, re-implement it in a future release. So, yeah. I just wanted to... I wanted to show you a little bit more salvaging. Uh, cus oh, yeah, we got to get rid of that thing. Board vehicle. Two. Um, one of the things that... and I that I got a comment about from one of you guys was that you had ran out of, run out of tin and you couldn't make the spaceship because you had no more tin. Um, and it was specifically you weren't able to make gunmetal anymore. But keep in mind that you can salvage gunmetal. And I did respond to you in the comments as such. 
But yeah, you can salvage gunmetal. Uh, in fact, I already have... Oh my god, this is terrible. Oh boy. Hmm. If you guys are watching anybody else play Osiris, have have do you know if they've had the same problem or not than this? Because this was not a problem in stable release. But it is really bad now. See now it now it's fine. I don't know, it's just a weird. Anyway, um yeah, so you can get gunmetal from salvaging. So if you still have a lot of salvage around on your map, if you haven't, you know, used it all up, then yeah, go out salvaging and get yourself some gunmetal that way. And, uh, you know, you might be able to, to proceed if you get enough. It's because right now I've got, uh, I found three pieces just this morning. Right before I started the camera, I did a little salvaging. Okay, here we go. Here's a spot. I did a little salvaging and uh, got three pieces of gunmetal just from that. So let's hit this one here. So, yeah, my two... My two wish list items for the spaceship are, you know, let us land faster and give us a free camera view so we can look around and see where we're landing. Those are the two things it desperately needs. But anyway, see, see how fast this is, you guys? It's just absolutely insane how, how fast I can salvage with this thing. Um, I just basically hold the button down and walk around and it just zips stuff up. You know, it's just amazing. It's a little faster, or a little takes a little bit longer on the airlock frame. And then if we hit, you know, a dismantle thing, I just have my key, or my finger rather, ready to go on the G key. And, um, yeah, we just hot knife through butter, baby. Hot knife through butter. Okay, well, anyway, I'm going to uh, continue uh, salvaging a little bit longer, and then I will meet you guys back at the base. We're going to get geared up to go into space. It should be fun. I'll see you guys uh, at the base. All right, guys, we are back, and boy, do we have a load of stuff, man. So I have uh, in my in the ship, I put, like, basically full stacks of, of what I got or non-stackable items. So <laughs> look at all this. We got so much stuff in here. Uh, so we completely filled the ship with all of this, and then my own inventory is also um, almost completely filled up with all this loot that we got from salvaging. So... And again, we got four gun metal, gun metal in total. So, um, yeah. So what we're going to do, is, or what I'm going to do rather, is I'm going to, um, let, let's first do this. Let's go into the base. And I'm going to grab what other, what other scrap that we currently have. So what we're going to do is go to the workbench and we're going to make uh, wires. So 29 wires from the scrap. That's really good. Cloth bundles. Um, so I think that's all we want to make in here. And then if we go to the furnace, we can make glass like crazy. We'll make rubber in here and we'll make plastic in here. Yeah, so not a bad bad haul. And then, of course, I've got all these nuggets. Like, okay, so let's take a look at this. We've got, I got two and a half, uh, over two and a half stacks of aluminum alone, plus all these other ores that you see here. Um, and the, and all these um, uh, alloys. So let's pull the raw ore out of here, because I like to keep the alloys slash ingots in this top bin. We got a nice little supply of scrap to replenish that. We'll put all that stuff in there. And I guess we'll, yeah, we'll put these scrap barrels in there too. Yeah, the rest of this is, is just normal scrap that we can't convert. So we'll hang on to it for now. I uh, apologize for the lag, you guys. It's just, I don't know what the hell's up with this game, but it just is having problems. Okay. Um, now we could... Yeah, we might as well actually convert all of the circuit boards into actual circuit boards, too. That's really valuable. Okay, so while that's still going on, let's grab the glass out of here. The rubber out of there. That's a nice little chunk of rubber and some more plastic, too. All from scrap. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, let me know if you guys are having similar problems with, with lag uh, in this this release of the game. It's uh it's pretty annoying. 
Not gonna lie, it's pretty annoying. Okay, let's put the pistol ammo in there. And then we're gonna go over to our tech storage and basically throw all of the rest of this stuff in here. And we got five whole circuit boards. So that was amazing. That was worth the price of admission right there. Okay, let's put these large medikits here. We got a full stack of medikits. And uh, we'll fill up our duct tape, or patch tape, I should say. And then we can put the rest of the patch tape into the overflow bin here. So yeah, we're, we're doing really good. Okay, and then we have a couple food items to put over here. Speaking of which, we do have uh, some more crops to harvest. So let's go hit those real quick. And then I've got... Um, I've got more crops too that I want to make too. So let's go get our crops. Whoop. Okay, so basically it's just FGB. Oh, this is pissing me off. All right, I'm going to restart. I'll be right back. Nice little view of our base there. Okay, let's get rid of our bloom. Let's get rid of our uh, quests. Off the screen. Let's turn our light on. And now we're back in business until the next time it happens. So, we're going to put all this food in here. Don't move the mouse when you're clicking. Um, default sort. Okay, so we have... Do I have... Oh yeah, I was going to say, I should have a whole mess of meat stew. We do. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab all the meat stew that we have. We're going to grab a stack of potatoes, a stack of carrots, and a stack of crab meat. And those are... Oh, we need, oh no, we need more. We need three meat and two veggies per stew. Okay, one thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we hang on to the crab meat requirement for the crab mech. So let's look at that really quick. Uh, okay, so we need... Th we, we just need three crab meat for that. Okay. What I'm going to do is, in this bin, I'm going to put three crab meat there, just so we have it, right? When the time comes. Okay, now let's just grab all the rest of the crab meat that we have, and all of the potatoes and corn, or not corn, carrots that we have. And let's go into here and make 49 crab stews. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, 49 crab stews, best food in the game. Okay, let's put all the rest of this stuff back into our food crate. Okay, so that's done. All right, guys, let's talk about what we need to do when we go to space for the first time. After... <laughs> After I show you something. Okay. So, in the comments, I was informed that there is indeed a separate uh, suit upgrade for the workbench, but it's mutually exclusive from the toolbench upgrade. Okay? And it even... Because I, I was playing with this uh, on a test, and it even tells you that, but I just, you know, I wasn't paying attention. I didn't RTFM is what it boils down to. So what we're going to do is we're going to make ourselves a another workbench. So we need four scrap metal and three patch tape. Mr. Krabs, you're interrupting my show here, as usual. Let's make ourselves a workbench. So utilities, workbench. I'm going to turn it this way, and then I'm going to hold shift to kind of fine-tune the angle here. That's pretty good right there. Now, if we look in the workbench and we go to upgrades, um, oh, we gotta do we gotta do a repair bench upgrade first. So, okay, so aluminum, leather, and lead for that. Okay, so let's do the repair bench upgrade. Okay, and now if we look in here, um, we have two options. We have either the tool station upgrade or we have the suit station upgrade. And notice it says in the description. This blocks the tool station upgrade on this workbench. Or if we choose this, this blocks the suit station. And I, I wasn't... <coughs> tight. 
excuse me, I wasn't uh, paying attention to that, of course, before. Um, and it's a little bit, and to me anyways, it's a, a little bit counterintuitive because nothing else, as far as I know in the game, has mutually exclusive upgrades, which is kind of odd, but if that's the way it is, that's the way it is. Uh, why, why not just let us do the tool bench and this suit upgrade on here? I don't know. But anyway, that's the way it works. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do the suit station upgrade. So we're going to need a circuit board, power cell, a gun metal, and a ferrochrome. Okay, let's see if we can find that stuff. Okay, we have everything. Let's do the suit station upgrade, and let's take a look at it. Okay, so this gives us um, uh, suit upgrades. Now, some of these are identical to the ones in the fabricator, and some of them are not. For example, this hover booster is exactly the same thing in the fabricator, but it has a different material requirement than the one in the fabricator. Right, so this has a hover duration of two, a hover height of two, and it uses half fuel for a ferrochrome, a plutonium, and a circuit board. But if we go look at the one in here, um, hover duration times two, hover height times two, half fuel usage. But this requires steel circuit board, battery, and wire, so it's a whole different material requirement. But then we have some things in here that are unique, like for example, you don't, you won't find the solar unit in the one outside. Um, but then you're going to find things in the outside one that you're not going to find in the inside one. So you see there's no solar unit here. But this one has hiking cleats, which allow you to, to go up and down steep cliffs without falling kind of thing. So it's really interesting. I'm not going to spend um, recording time going through each one of these specifically. So what, what you guys can do is just know that you can make two different suit upgrade stations. And um, I'll let you go through them yourself uh, later on. But... I've already looked at these, like I said, when I was testing. So, um, for space, now let, let's go ahead and segue into space here. There's two important things that you have to consider when you go into space. Oxygen is one of them, which seems obvious, but remember, we don't have to worry about oxygen while we're on Proteus. So, you might not think about that because you just haven't been in the habit of, um, you know, having to worry about oxygen, right? And then the other thing is temperature. Uh, so, both of the moons that we can go to, Lutari and Aziel are very cold, way colder than, um, you know, than Proteus. And then space itself, of course, is cold. So you so you need to consider what you're going to do about temperature. And the way that you handle that is you use suit upgrades that keep you warm. Okay, so in here, we have uh, the suit heater. The suit heater gives you a 30 cold resistance, but at the cost of minus 10 heat resistance. Now, in space... On Aziel, there are some lava rivers, and they are very hot if you get close to them. So if you're going to use this on Aziel, you got to be careful, but uh, you don't have to worry about that on Lutari. Um, so this is a really good upgrade to use because it's very cheap to make. It's only one Zamok and one wire. Easy, easy peasy. Um, so you want to so you want to do that. Now, you also have options for, you know, this is for your backpack, right? You also have options for your helmet that can help keep you warm, too. So one example of that would be... Um, the gold cover, right? So the gold cover of your lens gives you plus 15 heat and plus 15 cold resistance and a little tiny less oxygen consumption. So that's a really good one too. The problem is we can't make this yet because I don't have the stuff that we need to make adhesive. We're going to discover that in our discovery episode, which if all goes according to plan will be the next episode that we'll come out with, <coughs> excuse me, tomorrow. Um, so we can't make that right at the moment, but this would be a good choice too, because again, it's going to help keep you warm. Um, and then, you know, you've got, there's another one I wanted to look at. There's one called a mud cover. So check this out. You know how it tells us that the, the dirt is useless right here? Well, it's actually not because you actually use it to make the mud cover, which gives you plus five heat and plus five cold resistance, um, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, so it's just one dirt and one water. It's it's kind of interesting. Uh, I guess the concept there is that you smear mud on your on your your helmet uh, faceplate, so it blocks some of the glare. But I mean, how else? How are you going to see out of very well though? I don't know. <laughs> it's just the way it is. The more important point there is that the dirt it actually does have a use. It's not a hundred percent useless. It's just ninety nine point five percent useless. Okay. Anyway, uh, lens cover would be a good option too. Uh, plus ten plus. Uh, heat resistance and cold resistance but we need zirconium for that which is the whole reason why we're main reason i should say why we're going into space in this episode in the first place okay so 
Uh, point being that you do have some other backpack options. There, some of them are the same as the ones on the inside and the fabricator. Some of them are different. So you're just going to have to kind of go through them on your own and figure out which ones you want to do. But what we want is the suit heater. So I'm going to make that. But uh, there's one of the, a couple other things I want to show you. Now, you should take some... Uh, you should take some portable oxygen with you when you go up into space. Okay? And you make that in here? Yeah, oxygen tanks. So you need uh, the, the 6AL alloy and you need oxygen to make these tanks. Okay? Um, I actually already... I had already looted one of those and then I had that one thing of oxygen which I actually made earlier before I started the recording. And I... Uh, That's not what I meant to do. <laughs> that stupid bug flipped us way up into the air. Um, anyway, so I had earlier on looted an oxygen tank, and then I had, you know, that one barrel uh, of oxygen that we... What? Oh. Oh, yeah, we can change the color on the ship. That's not what I want to do right now, though. Um... Anyway, so I've got two oxygen tanks here. These are propellant tanks. We actually should take those in. Oh, man, i got to empty all this water. Okay, so anyway, make sure you have some portable oxygen. Now, this you, you probably won't need to use this, but you want to have it with you for emergency purposes. The other thing that you want to do before you go up into space, excuse me, or more specifically before you go to one of the moons, is make sure make yourself an inflatable dome kit, which, as you can see, I've already done here. So you make that in the 3D uh, printer. Come on, get up. Uh, right here, and it it's cloth, copper, aluminum, and uh, magnesium. Uh, make that because that does two really important things for you when you're on the other moons. Um, you can it's portable, so you can set it down and then pick it back up and take it with you. It gives you a save point. And it also, more importantly, will recharge your oxygen. So here's the thing. When you're out walking around on the surface of Lutari in particular, because um, <laughs> this is ridiculous how these bugs just throw our vehicles around like they're nothing. Um, are you dead? I don't think he's dead. I think he's stuck. Here, let's not waste a ammo on him. These damn bugs are just... Interrupting me like to no end today, aren't they? Okay. Get out of here. Get out of here. Okay, I think our our hover uh, uh, rover. I don't know why I keep calling it a hover vehicle. Our rover's good. Anyway, um, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, the dome kit. So the cool thing about the dome kit is that you can set it down, make a save point, and recharge your oxygen. And where you're going to need this specifically is on Lutari because there's no O2 on Lutari. There is your suit can actually synthesize oxygen uh, on Aziel, so it's like it's just like uh, Proteus in that regard for for O2. But for um, Lutari, you're going to need this dome for oxygen. Okay, so what we're going to do is go to uh, structures. We're going to choose the inflatable dome, and you just build it like you build anything else, right? And then you can go inside. You can do a save point on the bed, and your O2 will will uh, refill while you're inside of here. So it's pretty cool. And so if you between a combination of this and just getting back in the cabin of your ship, that will both of those things will replenish your oxygen. So why are we bringing the tanks then? Well, we're bringing the tanks, guys, for emergencies. Okay. So pack this up, boom, and then pick it up, and we're good to go on our way. We're just bringing the, the tanks for emergencies because, you know, we're going up into space and you just never know what might happen. So we're going to have those on us just in case something happens um, and we need that for emergencies. But we shouldn't have to use it. Okay, so I'm going to get all the rest of the crap out of the ship there and, and finish, you know, organizing all the, the water. I might even end up making another depository because we have so many containers. It's a nice problem to have. but um, And then I'm going to make the uh, that suit backpack upgrade that it'll keep us warm. And then when that's done, we're going to head on up into space and get ourselves some Ajournium and some um, uh, 
zirconium. <laughs> oh, one other thing. Make sure all your tools are repaired before you go up into space. And make sure you have plenty of food and drink and that sort of thing, too. But that's that should be pretty, pretty obvious. Uh, all right. I'll meet you guys uh, in here in just a few minutes when we're ready to go up into space. All right, guys. Let's do this. It is time to go to space. See you later, Mr. Krabs. All right. So... When you go to space, get up to speed, point up into the sky, and then as soon as you are going fast enough, press space to exit the planet. Take your hands off the controller, watch the animation. Once you escape the planet, then you're just kind of in cruise mode. Now, um, you, if you look around, you will find Lutari, which is where we're going to actually go. You'll find Aziel, which we're not going to go to today, but we will visit it, of course, later on. Uh, but if you stay in orbit around um, uh, Proteus, which is what we are doing right here. So this is Proteus. Um, it would suggest, too, by looking at this, that there's like oceans on Proteus, but there actually isn't. But notice that there's asteroids here. And these asteroids contain azurnium. So this is where you get azurnium. So if you take a look, for example, at this little asteroid here, you can see that there are some little blue crystal things, and that's the azurium. So what we're going to do is slow down before... Oh, we just bonked into the to the thing. Um, and, you know, interesting. There's no sound. How realistic is that? Wow. I think, th I think that's new. I want to say before we had sound. Now, the one thing you do want to be careful of is you want to watch your speed. So you want to make sure you're at zero kilometers per hour because if I continue to hold the right mouse button down, see, I start to reverse. Uh, so I don't know if the game will let you hop out of the ship when it's moving. I don't think it will, but just double check and make sure the ship is completely at a standstill before you jump out because, well, I think that should be obvious to you, right? <laughs> okay, so it says in the lower right-hand corner, it says zero kilometers per hour. Uh, I did do some damage to the ship, too, like quite a bit, as a matter of fact. Notice the health bar is, is a bit low there. Okay, so our ship is holding holding still. And so what we're going to do is we're going to press the F key to get out of the ship. And we are now spacewalking. What I'm going to do is open up the inventory and make sure I have these extra uh, oxygen things with us. And then uh, we basically just move around. Um to get to the Azurnium. Now, spacebar is up, control key is down, W is forward, S is backwards. So S isn't down, S is backwards. And then, of course, you can strafe left and right. So the only thing that's maybe a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, counterintuitive to that is control being down, but that's how it works. Okay. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get out our pick here, and we're just going to go up to this Azurnium, and we're going to mine it. Nothing could be easier, right? Now, because we are in space, of course, we do want to watch our oxygen, which is right down in the center of the screen. So we're at 90% O2. So we want to pay attention to that as we're going along and mining the azurnium. And actually, it's probably going to be easier just to do this in first person. But remember, we took, we took those points... Uh, F6. We took these spacewalk points. This is making a huge difference because we used to not have this and you used to move really, really slow when you spacewalk. So they've improved this greatly uh, by, you know, adding the ability for us to, to get those points. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to go around and grab... It looks like my dude's actually walking. Like, <laughs> see, see the pics moving? Let's put some light on. Um, that's That's hilarious. Anyway, I'm just going to go around and mine up some azurnium. I don't think we need a ton of this stuff, but, you know, I'll, I'll get, you know, I'll get a stack of it. We might as well, because maybe there are other things we need it for that I'm just not aware of yet. You used to need it for all of the, the droids, but apparently they've changed that. So uh, you don't need it. What? That was the sound of a bug spawning. Do we have space bugs? That's kind of creeping me out. You guys heard that, right? <laughs> Do we have, like, space crabs? Crabs that can survive in space? What the hell, man? All 
All right, do we have a full stack? Yeah, we do. All right, let's. That's good enough for now. Um, you know, there's pl plenty more if we decide we need it. Let's get our spanner out and just repair our ship since we did kind of bonk it a little bit. Uh, and you know, if this isn't already obvious, they um. They have um, not implemented fuel yet, so we still have unlimited fuel so far in the spaceship. And I hope they change that because, you know, it's not, it's very unrealistic at this point. Uh, okay, so let's get back in the ship here. Put this away. Now, my oxygen is currently at 83%, but as soon as I board the ship, then it just recharges. So that's why I say you don't, you probably will never need to use the tanks, but still, it's just a good idea to have them with you. Uh, what has made this even better, though, here again, is the fact that we can walk much more quickly in space with those skills, whereas we couldn't before. It was really slow before, like, oh, my gosh, gosh, this is painful kind of thing, right? Okay, I'm going to press the right mouse button to back up away from the asteroid. And then um, what we're going to do now is we're going to point towards Lutari, uh, which is up here. Okay, and then... Notice it says press space to enter planet. So as soon as we do that, the ship takes off at high speed towards Lutari, and it leaves the orbit of Proteus. But it's interesting, there's no, there's no spaceship sound. Is that supposed to be? I mean, it's supposed to be that way in, in, in real life because there's no sound in space, but... Huh. Yeah, I don't remember that being a thing... Okay, so we're going to enter the atmosphere of Lutari. And so it does like a little animation thing. And for Lutari, you just want to point your nose down. And we also want to aim for this little area over here because all this blank area out here is kind of like no man's land. So the planets uh, in the game are not set up like they are in, say, like an Imperion, where they're actual spherical planets. They're kind of just flat playfields. I don't know if that's something they'll make more realistic later on, but it's just kind of the way the game is right now. And I'll be honest with you guys, um, and I hope this isn't disappointing, but it's just where the game is right now. And that is that... Um, uh, I'd say probably 80% of this game is on Proteus. You, you do most of the stuff on Proteus. And you, you know, you can go up into space, you can go to a couple different planets, you can build a space station, which we're going to do just because we can kind of thing, but um, just be aware that um, there's not a whole lot of stuff to do in space at present, but I'm sure and I'm hoping that, you know, they will change that uh, in the future. Okay, so we got a crash satellite there. Anyway, what I'm doing is I'm going around and I'm looking for, um, see, is our ship just going to automatically detect that? We're looking for zir a zirconium. So I'm going to see if it's going to actually show up on the, on the map here. Uh, actually, I think I'm, yeah, I just see it visibly because it's red down there. Okay, so here we go. We're going to, we're going to land right in this little area here. Yeah, so um, you know, it is my hope, and I, I don't, I don't know this for sure, but it is my hope that we will get more content for space in future releases of the game. Um, but that's just kind of the state that it's currently in now. So the main reason to go to space is just to get the resources that you need. In our case, that resource is zirconium. Okay, notice how cold it is here. It's like super, super duper cold. But because we put on the suit heater, we can handle it. Uh, we're, we're cold. There's no doubt about it. We're cold, but whoa, uh, but we can handle it. Okay, so this is what we've been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. This is zirconium. And by mining this, we're going to be able to move up in the world, advance, build the end game stuff. And it's a beautiful thing. So let's uh, grab as much of this as we can. Um, It doesn't... We didn't seem to be able to scan it from the ship, but if we we should we can definitely pick it up from here. So let's go back into F3 again. Okay, so we have zirconium selected. Oh, is that not working? Because it doesn't seem to be popping up. I've got it like right in front of me. I'm not seeing it. Maybe it doesn't work. What's this orange thing over here? I think that's the 
this. Yeah, that's the crate. Hmm. Okay, we got carbon up here too. Does that show up on here? Let's take a look. Carbon, I think, is considered low density, even though it's hard. There is a difference between hardness and density. Don't ask me what that difference is, but there is, apparently. Yeah. Apparently, guys, the scanner's not working on Lutari. Interesting. That kind of sucks. That kind of sucks. Huh. Okay. Well, another thing that needs to be fixed. We might as well look in this crate whilst we're here. Uh, you know what? I don't think I'm going to grab any of that stuff. We've got tons and tons and tons of that kind of thing. Yeah, that sucks. Um, you know, Lutari's not super hard to to search on. Uh, Aziel is a pain in the butt to search for ores on. So if the scanner also doesn't work there, that's going to be a bummer, man. That's going to be a bummer. Oh, I didn't actually need more lead. Let's grab some while we're here. So yeah, you can get some of the same minerals up here that you can get on Proteus, and then some of them are... Uh, like, for example, the, um, the zirconia is only found here. I don't think you can find zirconia in Azio unless they've changed something with that. Yeah, that sucks that the scanner's not working, but, you know, it is what it is. Okay, so let's grab, since we need more carbon and lead, we might as well grab it since it's here. And then we're going to fly around again and continue to look for more uh, zirconium in particular. Now... Um, Lutari should have some diamond deposits. Um, so, you know, we'll grab those, of course, if we see them. And there's also a, a monster. Uh, it's called a moon mantis, I think. Uh, up here, too, that you can... That you have to watch out for. So, let's fly around a little bit more here. And see if we can spot some more zirconium. Man, that... Again, that really sucks that the the scanner doesn't work. And, you know, coupled with the fact that we don't have a, a, a free camera view can be real a real challenge sometimes to, to find what we're looking for. Okay, there's some more zirconium down there, so let's scoop, scooch down there. So, you know, here's another, here's another thing. <laughs> we were actually on the ground. But, no, the animation has to shoot us 50 feet back up into the air and then go through its little slow thing. <laughs> Come on, Nibs. You gotta fix that for us. Please, please fix that for us. Oh, it's so irritating. It's okay. We're having fun. We love the game. Okay, so let's see. We have more lead. I'm actually glad we're finding this lead here. And more carbon. Can never have too much carbon, ladies and gentlemen. It's just not even possible. And then we have one thing of zirconium over here that we're going to grab. All right, tell you what we're going to do. Um, let's go into here and put this stuff away. Uh, we're going to eat a crab stew. And I'm going to, be, because this is a relatively flat moon, I mean, in comparison, uh, we're going to put our gliders on. And we should be able to move across the landscape pretty good with this. I want to get our, uh, oh, never mind. I was going to say, I want to get our rifle on our toolbar in case we run into a moon mantis. But And also, I made some more ammo, too, as you can see there. Okay, so let's... um. We, oh, here, this is the other thing. Let's grab our uh, our inflatable dome kit. So that way, you know, if we need O2 and we're far away from the ship, we can we can do that. Okay, so. Uh, there we go. This is the only way to fly. Isn't this wonderful? Love the glider. Okay, let's get down here. And we're just going to kind of keep going south. I'm not entirely sure where we're at on the map in terms of the overall position, but it looks like if we look at the, if we face north, we're at 6.4 lat. So we're in the north and we're just a little bit to the west, um, but we're pretty close to the center. Okay, so yeah, let's just kind of cruise around a little bit and see if we can find some more zirconium. Uh, we're looking for diamond if we find it. 
And I want to show you the moon mantis if we can run into him. Okay, there's some more zirconium over there. Okay, it's telling us that the oxygen, our oxygen is getting low. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to F2, go to structures, build the inflatable dome. And hop in here and replenish our O2. And warm up too while we're at it. It's a beautiful thing. Let's also do um, a save point. Okay, progress is saved. And I thought we'd turn this off. I think maybe entering the new playfield re-enabled the bloom. Uh, so we'll turn that off. Okay, let's get out our spanner. Point it at the dome. Press F to pack up. Yes, and F to pick up. Now we're in business. Okay, those are all rock outcroppings. Let's finish the rest of this zirconium, or get this zirconium, I should say. Okay, there's a moon mantis. Let's go check this guy out. He's pretty pretty scary looking. Got a big old crater down here. Oh, we one-shot him. Wow, okay. Yay for the bolt rifle, huh? I didn't think we were going to one-shot him. So... When we do our discovery episode, um, at some point, I don't know if we'll do this in tomorrow's discovery episode, but at some point we'll have to come up here and discover. Uh, but this is, as you can see, this is a moon mantis. And yeah, that's, it's kind of hard to see exactly what he looks like, but there you go. Um, so let's not use anything on him. I don't need any meat at the moment. So you will, because we want to save that for the discovery episode, but there you go. That's what a moon mantis looks like. All right, so we got satellites here. I think this is new. I don't remember seeing satellites up here in uh, in the earlier stable release. So that's kind of cool. More salvage if you want it. Okay, this is a rich aluminum deposit. So notice I'm getting uh, two pieces. Oh, that one looks like three pieces per hit. This is a rich nickel. That was only one per hit. Hmm. Okay, that still only gives us one per hit. So I don't know what makes that better than rich iron. Yeah, we got two. Yeah, we're getting two per hit here. So this is awesome, man. You can get uh, a lot more rich aluminum. Not that I need more aluminum. <laughs> I probably won't. I probably won't mine any more of those right now. Uh, but we could use some more nickel and iron. Iron's the other thing you can't have too much of. It's just not possible. Okay, well, we're gonna leave the rich aluminum there. Oxygen's low. Okay. All right, let's set up our dome here to get replenish our O2. Got a big old crater down that way. There's something... Oh, you know what? That might be obsidian. We used to be able to get obsidian from here, too, and it looks like it's still down there. So let's go check that out. Those are just rock outcroppings. And this is obsidian. All right, cool. So this is a new... 
element here that we haven't come across yet. And in the last stable release, the only place you could get it was here, and it looks like that is still the case. Because I have not seen this on Proteus, unless they added it to Azio, but I don't think they would have done it. But maybe, who knows. Nifty. Okay, so we got a little bit of obsidian. I'm not sure what we're going to use it for. What's this here? That's This is all just rock outcroppings. I want to check them just to make sure because some of the models for the actual elements look like the rock outcroppings. Okay, we got another rich iron here. And what's this? A rich gold deposit. Okay, we're only getting one. No, we got two per hit that time. Okay, good. Nice. Okay, and this pretty much brings us to the south end of the play field here. Let's go ahead and set up our inflatable. Whoops. Hitting the wrong buttons here. So I'm going to start working my way back uh, towards the ship. Notice that the ship does show up on your compass, so you can't lose it. And uh, if I run into anything new, uh, I'll show you that on camera. Otherwise, I'll just meet you guys back at the ship. All right, this is new. Uh, this is a rich lithium deposit. So we can grab some of that. I think I have a fairly decent supply of lithium uh, back at the base, but we'll grab a, a few more. I do need to take a look at my inventory too, see where we're at. Uh, let's do a sort here. Oh yeah, we got we got plenty more room. I mined one rock outcropping just to see if it was any different than Proteus, but it's not. So you mostly get stone, occasionally get copper, that sort of thing. Looky what I found, guys. Diamond. All right. Now, you used to get a whole crap ton of diamond from these um, instead of, like, just six. Let's see if we still do. Nope. They changed it to just one per. Okay. That's fine. I mean, we got so many, so much diamond available to us now, too, you know, with the caverns down below. Uh, but at least we know that it's still up here, which is good. So if you happen to run out of it, you know, uh, back down on... Proteus, you can come up here and get it. Okay, it looks like this does the same thing that the iron and the tungsten does. So even though I can't see any more diamond there, there's actually another piece under the ground. Uh, so you definitely don't want to miss that on the diamond. I think I did miss it on the first two, um, and I have no idea where they were. <laughs> Somewhere over here. Uh, so those are probably lost forever. But uh, yeah, make sure you pay attention to that because, you know, diamond is something you don't want to... Uh, you know, miss a, a piece or three on it for sure. Okay, we are back at the ship. Now, um, if I was just doing this, you know, playing this by myself and not doing a tutorial series, I, I would have actually flown around in the ship. I wouldn't have walked all the way across the surface of the moon from one end to the other. The reason I did it this time is I just kind of wanted to demonstrate, you know, that if you do decide to do that, um, you know, how to do it. Basically, the most important part of that whole thing was to make sure that you use, uh, that you have the, the inflatable biodome with you uh, for your O2. Um, but what I would actually do is I'd just fly around in the ship and then and just land it when I came into a cluster of, of resources. But here's what we pulled away from, from here. Um, keep it in, in mind that there was a whole bunch of aluminum that I didn't actually mine just because I don't need it. I have so much back at the base. Uh, but we have... Uh, uh, a little over a stack of azurium. We've got uh, a little over a stack, stack and a half of carbon. Uh, just one piece of copper there. We got 25 diamonds, which isn't too bad. A little bit of gold, um, a decent supply of iron, and a little over a stack of lead, some lithium, some nickel, um, some obsidian. And then uh, this is the most important thing, of course. We got the zirconium here. So pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and hop in the ship and head on back home. So just like taking off from Proteus, you just get up to speed, going up in the sky, and press space to exit the planet.
Okay, once you're, the ship's completely exited, there is a, well, I was going to say that there's kind of a cool view of Thesis Prime, but most of it, we're looking at primarily on the dark side there. And then, of course, there's a, a space eye view of Lutari where we just were. This is Aziel over here. We're going to do that in a different episode. We're not going to go there now, uh, but that's like a big ice moon. Uh, so what we want to do, of course, is we want to find Proteus and head on home. So I don't think, I think that those are still the only places we can go in space so far. Um, at some point, I hope that they re-implement, I think it's called Wur, which is a lava planet. Um, so we have another place to go to. And then, you know, maybe in the future releases, we'll have even more stuff to do with space. That would be really cool. Uh, but for now, that's uh, bas basically what we have to do in space. So it's fun. I, I am going to build a space station just because we can, you know, kind of thing. Um, so when you enter the atmosphere of Proteus, and it'll be this way in Aziel too, uh, because uh, essentially Thesis doesn't really have an atmosphere to speak of. You know, you see the, the burn in like you would expect in any atmospheric entry. Um, I'm wondering if this is going to damage our ship, too, a little bit. It doesn't look like... There's just a tiny sliver of damage on the ship, but that might have just been a hard landing on my part or something like that. So it doesn't look like it actually damages the ship. The animation plays a little bit longer than I think it needs to, um, so there is that. <laughs> so you just pretty much have to wait until your ship starts stops burning up. It does look cool, though. It definitely does. And then once you have control again... Um, then you just kind of keep flying down until you can start seeing the landscape. Um, looks like we're actually out over the deep desert at the moment. Uh, so let's yeah, turn this way and then just look on your compass uh, for where, wherever your base is and then fly to it. One of you guys were telling me in the comments in Experimental you actually were was killed uh, upon re-entry. But that's, that's a bug and that's not supposed to happen obviously. So that was just an unfortunate uh, situation there, but it shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't kill you. All right, guys. Well, um, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, in the next episode, we are going to do the discovery episode. So, um, and we're also going to do a couple upgrades with the zirconium that we now have too. Uh, but the, the primary uh, goal for next episode is to do some discovery. So we're going to make all the, the other tools that we don't have, like the bio extractor thingamadoodle and the pliers and that sort of thing. And then we're going to go around and start discovering plants and animals and different materials that we can get from them. I'm really excited to do that because I haven't really spent any time to speak of uh, doing that. And that's a you know definitely a new part of, of the update here. So looking forward to that. Actually, hold on. I don't want to park in front of the lab because... Um, the, the other part of what we're going to do tomorrow in tomorrow's episode, too, is we're going to make the crab mech, and we're going to walk around on the crab mech while we have some fun uh, doing the discovery. So that should be fun. Let's get her on over here a little bit more and bring her down. Okay, guys, I'm going to let you go here. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Mr. Krabs, go away.